Good evening and welcome to Current Issues. I'm your host, Hisham Tilawi. Welcome to the program, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, in our quest for the truth, we will be speaking again about 9-11. I guess this is the self-proclaimed official voice of the truth movement. We will continue on this quest until the truth is out and until we find out exactly what happened on that day. Tonight we will be speaking with a pilot that is someone who flies airplanes, someone who knows how to fly them, someone who knows how to handle them, and someone who knows what happens when you fly an airplane doing 500 miles an hour at that low attitude or altitude when they hit the, uh, the towers. And uh, especially the one that hit the Pentagon. We will be speaking more. We will go, we're going to concentrate on that particular one because there are a lot of questions to be answered. Now, before we dig deeper into this tonight, the person I will be speaking with, Robert Balsamo, he's an expert. He does not have the answers, but he has questions, lots of them, which is good in a way. As you know, we have brought you a lot of experts, some who offered some speculation. One good thing about my guest tonight is he will not speculate, but he will tell you what could and could not have happened on that day. And that will get us to then what really happened. We must know the truth, ladies and gentlemen. We must know the truth, and the truth will set us free. Because what we have done after 9-11 in Iraq and in the world, somebody is going to have to pay for that. Right now, we are all paying for it. But somebody has to pay for it dearly. And the only way that we can find out is if we can find if we can get to the truth. We must start asking for an independent inquiry into exactly what happened on that day. Or the government needs to give us the answers to what had happened on that day. In the second hour, <clears throat> we will be speaking with Ed Canine. He's with uh, Creative Voices for Nonviolence, um, or Voices for uh, Creative Nonviolence. We'll get that one right in the second hour. But he had just got back from um, Iran. A Christian delegation went to Iran last week, uh, met with uh, people of Iran, met with officials there, and we will find out exactly what they have done and what the Iranians told them. And uh, this particular gentleman, Ed Canine, he was in Baghdad when uh, we attacked Iraq. And uh, as a matter of fact, he had some of his friends were kidnapped. And uh, when the war started, he was in Baghdad and did not leave until uh, there was a ceasefire. But before we go to my guests, and uh, tomorrow is the Arab Summit. They are meeting in Saudi Arabia, in Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. And uh, they are extending another hand of peace to Israel. Condoleezza Rice today, she said that she wanted the Arabs to extend the hand of peace to the Israelis. The Arabs, let me remind you, they did extend that hand of peace to Israel back in 2000 in the Arab summit in Beirut. And Israel refused it. What is happening now, ladies and gentlemen, in Palestine... It's a shame. It's a shame for everyone in this world who sees what happens and does not do anything for those Palestinians. I'm going to show you a picture of what happened when a woman was just passing through one of these Israeli checkpoints. If we can go to uh, picture one. Okay. That is a picture... That is a woman going through an Israeli checkpoint, and they have dogs at these uh, checkpoints. 
and this dog tormented this this woman and the soldiers were just standing there laughing after a few minutes of this torture then they decided to interfere and they had a hell of a time trying to get that dog off of that woman just imagine ladies and gentlemen especially the ladies out there walking going home you go through an Israeli checkpoint which there's a lot of them there are a lot of them in uh, Palestine they are making the lives of, of uh, Palestinians miserable and look at this how would you like to be in that lady's shoes I don't know was she scared I don't know I probably would be scared to death if one of these killer dogs and by the way these are killer dogs and uh, they're very much trained to uh, attack Palestinians because as soon as that dog saw that Palestinian woman he jumped that's one of the things that is that are happening in Palestine besides the wall that is caging in all the Palestinians and all this is happening while the world is busy with something else called Iraq and now after we had done a miserable job in Iraq by the way over two and a half million Iraqis have left Iraq there is over a million 1.2 million Iraqi refugees in Syria there's almost a million Iraqi refugees who fled Iraq in Jordan there's about a hundred and twenty thousand in Egypt the neighboring countries like Syria Jordan and Egypt they asked the United Nations to build refugee camps for Iraqis inside Iraq the United Nations came back and said we do not have a safe space in Iraq to build refugee camps we can build them in the neighboring countries but we do not have a safety zone in Iraq nowhere that we can put these refugees in that's how good we are doing in Iraq who's responsible for that who is responsible for that what is your responsibility in this maybe we need to start asking these questions okay um, let's see do we have the guest with us uh, Rob you with me is Rob with us can you hear me oh he's not with us okay all right he's not with us so uh, we will see just let us know what what's happening so I'll know where um, where to go and what to do okay just to uh, give you an idea about uh, my next guest pilots for non-11 truth is an organization of aviation professionals and pilots throughout the globe that have gathered together for one purpose we are committed to seek the truth surrounding the events of the 11th of September 2001 our main focus concentrates on the four flight maneuvers performed and the reported pilots we do not offer theory or point blame however we are focused on determining the truth of that fateful day since the United States government does not seem to be very forthcoming with answers we stand with the scholars and veterans for truth alongside family members of victims family members of soldiers who have given the ultimate sacrifice including the many ground zero workers who are now ill or have passed away when we ask for a new independent investigation into the events of 9-11 we do not accept the 9-11 Commission report as a satisfactory explanation for the sacrifice every American has made and continues to make some more than others and um, I believe we do have Rob with us welcome to the program sir Hello, Sam. good to be with you thanks for having me on thank you um, Rob I, I did say one thing which is good about you guys and about your organization is you don't really know what the answers are but you know what the questions are and yeah, absolutely. 
Let's start with your organization, who you are, who are the people. I've looked at the list, an extremely impressive list of members that you have. Tell me a little bit about your organization and some of the people in it and the credentials so we can move into the next hour trying to not have answers but actually uh, have questions. Well, sure. Uh, Pilot211truth.org. Um, basically, uh, uh, me and a friend of mine, Glenn Spanish, uh, when I first started doing my research back in May of 2006, is when I quote unquote woke up, uh, watching a, a video on TV, uh, them telling us that we can, uh, that new, uh, five planes, DO, Department of Defense video where you see something level across the Pentagon lawn and impacting the Pentagon. And here they are trying to tell us in mainstream media we could see a 757 in 10 seconds flat. And I'm thinking to myself, well, <laughs> no, I can't. So um, from there I started poking around on the Internet, and I came across Operations Northwoods, which, which completely blew me away that, that our government would even think of doing something like that. And then here I am six, seven months later, eight months later, with uh, Pilots for Now on the Truth.org. I, I got hooked up with uh, Food Networking with Glenn Stanish, who's the co-founder. And we came up with the idea, hey, let's start getting some pilots and organizing pilots together and, uh, you know, have us all in one, in one place to, uh, speak out from. And I started the website and started research. Then we, um, uh, started picking up, uh, you know, pilots along the way. They just email us with their, uh, with their credentials and I speak with them on the phone, make sure they're legitimate, of course. And, uh, we just keep adding to the list. Okay. Now, you guys have concentrated more on the flight, I believe Flight 77 that hit the Pentagon. You have a lot of questions about that particular flight. Let's start. We don't want to go into conspiracies and a missile hit it. I know you don't want to do that. But you do have some questions about how that was performed. Let's let's start with with the uh, 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 the, the flight data, the black box. Yeah, the, the reason that, that uh, we've done most of our research so far on American 77 is because in August of 2006, we received, through a Freedom of Information Act request, the um, black box data um, from the NTSB, the, the, the flight data recorder, FDR. And, of course, as soon as we received that, I just started digging right into it. I probably spent three days straight without sleep. <laughs> it was like almost getting like a Christmas present trying to pour over this, this information. So uh, we, that's how excited we were about it. But uh, we found a lot of discrepancies within the flight data recorder as compared to the official story, the, the government story, um, that American Airlines 77 hit the Pentagon. Now, it, it, the, the flight data recorder, we noticed right away that um, the flight path, for one, was skewed uh, a few degrees north of where it's supposed to be at. And again, the, uh, uh, the NTSB claims this, this flight data recorder came from American Airlines 77. We don't. Well, let me, let me ask you a professional question. I mean, do, do those normally have a margin of error on them, or is it perfect? Yeah, sure. They, they do have margins of error, but we also have to remember that the, NT, the professionals at the NTSB put this together. And when I was looking through this, when I first saw it, that flight path, that's what I figured. I figured it was just an error where they, where they rotated the flight path a little bit. Um, and, you know, the human intervention that was involved, um, it, it was due to that fact that there might have been some error on that flight path. So I started getting involved with uh, the altitude. And the altitude itself, based on the times that they have, the time stamps, it's too high to hit the Pentagon. Now, again, there's error there as well. There could be error there as well, as in um, uh, what's called altimeter lag, since the altimeter is based on uh, barometric pressure and uh, changes in air pressure. As you, you know, as you go higher uh, from the ground, the air gets thinner, and that's, what the, well, that's how an altimeter operates. It, it, um, okay. it measures that dif difference, and it's highly sensitive. So we figured, you know, since it was going so fast outside the aircraft, what we call the aircraft envelope, and it was descending, uh, we figured, you know, the altimeter might have been lagging a little bit behind um, the actual aircraft, the actual height of the aircraft. So then we looked into that further and said, okay, let's see if it matches up with 
vertical speed. And vertical speed is how fast the aircraft is descending, coming down. Now, <laughs> when you look at the vertical speed, if we have the altimeter lagging behind it, behind the aircraft, and the aircraft is actually low enough uh, to hit these light poles, these, these five light poles across Highway 27 prior to hitting the Pentagon, the vertical speed was much too great uh, to pull out and be level with the lawn, that object that you see going across the lawn in the Department, Department of Defense video, those five frame videos that I was, that I was explaining before. Um, it was much too great. So everything, the way the animation and the data appears right now, everything cross-checks. As pilots, we cross-check everything and make sure a certain instrument is telling us the truth. In other words, if the altimeter says that it's showing that we're level, the artificial horizon should be showing that the attitude indicator should be showing that we're level. The airspeed should not be increasing or decreasing. The, and, and the vertical speed indicator should be showing level and so on and so forth. So we make sure that's called cross-check. And we did the same exact thing with the, with the data that we have now, and it all cross-checks. So if there was any margin of error in one specific parameter, it would have to domino into these other instruments and parameters, okay? okay? And it would cause a domino effect where it wouldn't match up anymore. Okay. Now, when I talked to you today, you mentioned something about the Flight 77 went off the radar for about eight minutes, and then something else appeared that they called it Flight 77. Yeah, that's correct. Um, the, the Flight 77, American 77... Uh, was westbound and of course it made its turn. Uh, it was supposedly hijacked over a three minute period of time, which there's discrepancies with that as well. If anybody sees the film, we, we point that out. And um, it started its turn back towards the Pentagon out at the Ohio Kentucky border out by Falmouth, what's called Falmouth VOR. It's a radio beacon out there. And um, when it made its turn, uh, the transponder was reportedly turned off at that time. And there's a radar hole out there. Now, just because the transponder is turned off, which is what air traffic controllers see on their radar screens, it basically it's a, it's a radio wave that goes out to the aircraft. The transponder, what it does is it takes that radio wave and amplifies it and sends it back with, along with some other information about the, about the flight. When that transponder is turned off, you don't get that amplified wave anymore, but radar still works. It still bounces off the metal of the airplane. That's how we can, you know, see if uh, if we have any bandits in our airspace and, and try to go intercept them. Obviously, they don't want to announce that they're there, so they won't have a transponder turned on. However, when this transponder was turned off, it was also supposedly and coincidentally turned off in a radar hole, a, a rate of where radar coverage normally um, is not over those mountains, out in the Allegheny Mountains in west, uh, western West Virginia. And it was completely lost off radar for about eight minutes. Now, a new target reappears, which we cover in the film as well, um, west of Dulles, southwest of Dulles. And, and we have a clip on ABC News, but where one of the air traffic controllers explains that and how they see it coming in. And that's called the primary target. And all they had was basically the radar bouncing off of the metal of the airplane. That's what they saw. Now, this was a good 10, 15 minutes prior to impact. And we have all these bases rings around, as Casper Weinberger, former Secretary of Defense, said from uh, uh, Reagan, the Reagan era, you know, the, 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 uh, the downtown area of Washington, D.C. is ringed with Air Force bases, and the ability to get fighters in the air to intercept anybody is very, very, very high, and that's in the film as well. Okay. And they shut down, they're supposed to shut down this whole airspace, which we, which we diagram in the film. And, uh, it's now, uh, how long after, it was like 40-some minutes after um, uh, the towers were hit? Yeah, not actually, uh, the, the second tower was hit at 9.03, okay, in the morning. That was the, that was the south tower. And it was uh, a good, well, 9.37 in the morning, so what's that, 34 minutes. Almost 40 minutes after the second tower was hit. Uh, they didn't intercept this airplane heading towards the Pentagon. So at 9.03, the whole world knew we were under attack. So we should have been in lockdown at that, at that point, especially D.C. Okay. Uh, at 9.03, this aircraft, American 77, was, uh, was already dropped off radar. Uh, the hijack has already taken place. 
and Langley was notified at 908 that this aircraft was missing. Okay. Uh, th there's still a half an hour before this aircraft gets to its, its uh, target, which was supposedly the Pentagon. Okay. Now, now let me... Let me ask you something about the uh, Pentagon and the uh, this aircraft. Uh, of course, the initial hit, it was a small, almost perfect hole. Um, is that big enough for, and what we're looking now at a graphics of uh, a huge 757 in front of the Pentagon. Uh, now, is that the, the angle of impact? That, that plane would have been dragging for probably a few hundred feet before it hit there, and also uh, this, the hole was too small. Did you guys look into that? We we haven't looked into the engineering aspects of the building, no. Uh, we mainly focus on the aviation aspects of 9-11. However, I have, you know, I have looked into it, and um, we do have um, some really good researchers out there that have done research on this. I believe there's a French organization that has done um, um, a rebuttal, I guess you can say, for the uh, ASCE report, the, uh, the report that came out on the, the official government report, so to speak, that came out on the damage at the Pentagon, and this French organization just tore it apart. Uh, the angles didn't match up, uh, wings didn't match up, you know, uh, there, were, there were a lot of discrepancies in those conflicts. But, now, in, in um, the data, uh, in the black box, in the data uh, um, recording, that flight was way too high to hit those posts, right? That's correct, according to the government, uh, government information but provided by the NTSB. Kay. Um, it was too high, uh, and we have two sets of altitude data based on their timestamps. It's too high to hit the, those light poles. It was actually like, uh, what is it, like at one time it was like 400 and some feet above? Yeah, 480 feet too high, um, according to actually it's... Okay. Now, what we're showing on the screen, Rob, is uh, what you guys have simulated or somebody simulated uh, from that flight data recorder, and we can see, I guess, the uh, the one on top right-hand side, that's the altitude? Uh, I can't. I got a you, little you, bit of delay on okay. that. Okay. Okay. But anyhow. Uh, if you're looking at the animation with the altitude on the type, top right-hand corner. Right. Yeah, that's the animation that was that was done and provided by the NTSB. Okay. Uh, we didn't do that. The, the, that animation was produced by the... National okay. Defense. Now, I, I understand that one from your organization tried to call the NTSB, and I heard uh, his conversation with them, and they basically said, look, we were asked to do a job by, uh, I guess, you know, another government entity. We did the job, and this is what we came up with. That's correct. <laughs> yep. And they won't comment on it. They won't, they won't refute it. They won't retract it. They won't try to correct it. Uh, you know, when when an, when a, an official report is put out, whether it be by the press or or by a, by a scientific uh, community or, or or a government agency, um, it, and if there's if there are legitimate errors in it, you would want to correct that for for the public. Okay. But now I have also I'm go sorry, ahead. Go ahead. No, no, go uh, ahead. I'm sorry. I, I have looked through this. We have drawn through this information with a fine-tooth comb. And like I was saying before, everything cross-checks the way it is now. If they were to go and fix one possible error, it would domino into another error. It would domino into another parameter, throwing that one off, and it would just throw everything off. So the, 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 most likely the reason that they're not correcting it is because they can't. Okay. Um, it, it, it's... Uh, it's pretty standard the way it is right now and again these people make these animations and and they do this work five days a week seven days a week i mean that's their job they're the professionals that do now, it now have we had plane crashes like um where a plane would just like hit a mountain or something at very high speed have we had that yeah. happen yeah sure there's, there's been the, I mean, did the plane just evaporate or we have wreckage and bodies uh, in, in, in all of these instances, or uh, sometimes just everything evaporated? Yeah, no, I haven't seen anything like that before. Okay. I mean, we but we two aircraft, essentially four aircraft, evaporate on September 11th, and 
I, you know, I've seen in, through my training and airline uh, recurrent training courses, you know, we go over accidents that might have occurred. Um, we have to take retraining every every uh, six months. And okay. we go over aircraft accidents that occur. <laughs> of course, you can see a plane crash there. Uh, you know, you see wings, you see tails, you see engines. Okay. Uh, but I have, I'm going to, Rob, I'm going to put the picture up, uh, uh, which is uh, the, the initial uh, perfect hole that I talked about. Uh, and we see a fireman standing in the front before the top of that building actually caved in. Uh, the, the hole that we um, that we see is, I mean, the, there is no way on earth how elastic this airplane was that it would squeeze into this hole. Yeah. yeah again, it's it's uh, that's something for the engineering guys to work out. And from what I understand, it doesn't fit. Now, some bodies uh, uh, from uh, like uh, 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 autopsies were uh, autopsies were made or conducted at Andrews Air Force with bodies out of Flight 77. Well, I I'm not too sure about that. From what I understand, the, the DNA uh, was pulled from the wreckage and brought to a military base in Dover, not not Andrews. Uh, Dover. I'm sorry. Yes, Dover. Yeah, and as a matter of fact, the same. Um, from what I understand, once again, uh, I haven't researched it thoroughly. We are starting to get into that now. But um, the the uh, same DNA that was also pulled from supposedly United 93 in Shanksville was also brought to Dover uh, for examination. And that's where the reports are coming out that, you know, DNA was found in the wreckage. Now, if people want to believe this government, well, then they can believe those reports. I personally... Uh, this government's known for lies and corruption. I, I take everything that they say with a grain of salt now. Now, you very much, I mean, since 2001 until probably about a year ago, you very much were just one of the regular, normal, average people. I mean, you're a yeah, pilot, you, yeah, but you really did not think people. much about uh, what's going on until you saw the... Um, uh, the video that the Pentagon put out saying this is the flight and this is the airplane hitting the building. That's really what, what, what made you say, well, wait a minute. And it kind of, yeah. you made a 180 degree switch. Well, I, I didn't make a 180 degree switch because basically what happened was, you know, from 2000, I'm a New Yorker and I was in New York at the time when it happened. I was actually getting ready to, ready for work, uh, supposed to be flying out of LaGuardia that day. I was based out of LaGuardia, and then that happened, and um, it was very emotional, as it was for everybody. I was very angry, I'm sure, as everybody was, uh, and I wanted to go get the terrorist. <laughs> you know, uh, I was one of the first pilots back in the air after they let us back up. As soon as I got on the ground, I called every military branch to offer them my services. And you know what they told me? They said, Rob... We're covered on, on all our pilots that we need right now in the military. What we need is to get America back in the air, and you will be serving this country by just being a civilian pilot and being an airline pilot. You know, flying jets for a living is fun, and I was always, I was always happy to go to work. After that, I was, I was proud to go to work because I thought I was doing something for this country. Then I start seeing the lies. I start seeing the Iraq lies. I start seeing everything, and I start poking around. You know, before that, I was I was just, you know, caught up in my own life, trying to build more flight time, looking forward to the next upgrade. What am I doing this weekend? I was that type, you know? And then I start seeing all these lies coming out and things not making sense. And then, um, like I said, in May of, this, of last year, I see this new DOD video that came out, and I'm like... Why are they doing it? Are there still questions? I, I don't see a 757. Why are they even bothering with this? I thought this was all over with. So, and that's when I started poking around, and I initially went in to find everything I possibly could to back up the government story, because I didn't want to believe that they had something to do with this. So, I did everything in my power to try and find anything to back up the government story, and here I am, Piles for 9-11 Truth. Eight months later. So what what is it that you did not believe in that video uh, that they put out? I don't see a 757. Okay. Plain, is, plain and simple. I don't see a 7. They, they, they were telling us on, on mainstream media that you could see a 757 in 10 seconds flat. 
going across that lawn. Well, no, I can't. I've seen a lot of 757s in my time. <laughs> I can't see one in that film. Okay. Uh, tell me about uh, other stuff uh, that you're, or other d discrepancies in, in the other three uh, flights. Uh, the ones that hit the South and North Tower and the one in Pennsylvania? Well, like I said, we, we've just been getting into our research, and we did our research on uh, early on American 77. That's what we've been doing for the past few months it's, since August. I haven't really dove into uh, the North and South Tower hits yet, but we will be. Um, I've, I've dabbled a little bit in United 93, and there are also discrepancies there. Uh, the flight data recorder shows it coming in at a certain angle where... The crater, when you look at this crater, it looks like a straight down, a vertical impact, right? I mean, there's no ditch or anything. It looks like a, like a cookie cutter outline of the aircraft when you look at this crater. But according to the, uh, flight data recorder, this thing was doing about a 40 degree angle to the ground. And you can see that on our site in our, um, I drew a picture of it. A very crude picture. I'm not an artist, so don't blame me, but, uh, this aircraft was coming down at a 40 degree angle and it's been a while since I did it and I think I figured it out as, uh, with all the different angle of attack and everything else it impacted, supposedly impacted the ground according to the flight data recorder at a 35 degree angle okay. now a 35 degree angle impact into the ground you'd think there'd, there'd be this long ditch now l let me ask you uh, this, have you ever seen where a plane crash where the plane actually just went inside the earth and nothing left no. out of it? No. As a matter of fact, if your viewers want to look it up, U.S. Air Flight 427, I believe is the number, has a very, very similar um, uh, accident scenario as United 93. In other words, it, it came straight down in, a, in an impact. Um, but when you look at the wreckage of U.S. Air, if it's not 427, they could Google U.S. Air Pittsburgh crash. Um, it happened up in Pittsburgh, and it was a high-speed uh, vertical uh, impact due to rudder, uh, what's called rudder upset. There was a rudder, up, uncommanded rudder upset on the aircraft, and this thing just spiraled out of control. And I've seen the animation, and it's, and it's disheartening okay. to watch it. But, uh, Rob, um, stay with me. We're going to take a quick break, and we will be oh, right okay. back. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. We are speaking with Rob. Uh, Bes How do you say your last name, Rob? Uh, Balsamo. Balsamo. Good Italian boy from New York. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, uh, the, the one in Pennsylvania, um, the flat data recorder, they did recover that, correct? Yeah, they, they recovered okay. the one in, in uh, well... Any in el any, any, anything else record. they recovered? Uh, I've heard reports, and again, we're just starting to get into the research on the 993. Uh, they recovered parts um, from Shanksville, and they recovered parts from the Pentagon. Now, here's the interesting story. You know, the, the government can so easily prove their theory of these aircraft crashing there. All they have to do is get the parts and the part numbers and the maintenance manuals from the airline to professionals such as us that are inquiring about this information. And we could start from there and start matching it up. Uh, it's so easy to get a positive identification on some of this stuff, but the government just refuses to do it. Now, again, it's six years later, and of course they can fabricate this stuff by this by this point in time, but at least it'd be a start, you know, that we can look over this stuff. But, uh, again, from what I understand with United 93, I, I, was on, I, was, I was told and I've heard that they, they found almost 90% of that airplane buried in the ground. Well, where is it? You know, when TWA no, 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 ex explain down. something, explain something for me. Uh, the one that hit the Pentagon evaporated completely when it went through walls. But 90% of an airplane that hit dirt and earth 
we found 90% of that airplane, but we did not find anything with one that had a concrete wall? Well, the American 77, well, the aircraft that reportedly struck the Pentagon, I hate to call it American 77 because that's not proven yet, but... Whatever object. Um, yeah, whatever object hit, there were parts that were found inside the Pentagon, but very limited parts. I mean, these aircraft have over 100, uh, 150 feet. There wasn't a seat. I mean, they found one wheel hub. They found a landing gear, one landing gear strut out of, out of three. Um, the, the wheel hubs, they found one out of eight. Um, you know, they, well, and, were, were and those fact, these were, pictures, these pictures that they have aren't even on any government site supporting the government story. You find them on other sites with anonymous, uh, people who, who supposedly took these pictures inside the Pentagon. Now, these parts that they found, were they parts out of, uh, 757? We don't know. They're just photographs, as far as I know. What about that engine, uh, or part of an engine, co the core, or whatever you call it? Um, yeah, there is a famous um, photograph of an engine rotor hub uh, that you see outside uh, with, uh, with a person standing next to it. Now, there's a website out there um, that they say they're aviation experts, <laughs> and they're, they're, they're touting, basically, the, the official story. Um, saying that, uh, yeah, this is from the RB, the RB211 was the Rolls Royce engine that was on 757, but the way they match it up, they say, well, the, the person standing in the photograph is approximately this height, and you can, you can approximately get a measurement on this rotor hub, and this approximately can fit in an RB211. <laughs> well, when you, when, when you ask me to approximately go over to Iraq to fight any of these wars, it better be, you know, I want, I want some solid concrete evidence that we're fighting the right people. So, so uh, I mean, you, you related the war in Iraq to 9-11. Why did you do that? Well, uh, you know, uh, the, the powers granted this government was all, was all given this government due to 9-11, was it not? So, I guess most American people thought we go into uh, we attacked Iraq because of what Iraq done to us on 9/11. Uh, Afghanistan and Iraq, right? The the powers granted this government. I mean, Cheney was on uh, on Russia's show, uh, if I recall correctly, it was Russia trying to equate Saddam Hussein to September 11th. Um, we had a we had a vote in the in the uh, in Congress, hundred and nothing to give these guys war powers after 9-11. I mean, the, 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 the approval ratings for Bush at the time were over 90%. Of course, we were all pissed off and we wanted, we wanted blood. But actually, we found so, out later that Iraq and Saddam had nothing to do with 9-11, and they had nothing to do with uh, Al-Qaeda or links to Al-Qaeda. That's right. Not only that, no WMDs. I mean, it's, it's insane what's happening to our world right now. And... and I guess, in a way, it's kind of good because it's waking up more and more people to, to look into and get involved in what their government's doing and not just giving them, giving them blind trust. Are we waking up fast enough? I'm sorry, go ahead. Are we waking up fast enough? I hope so. I mean, it looks like we're growing exponentially right now. I mean, with Rosie O'Donnell starting to speak out and... And, uh, of course, Charlie Sheen is coming out, and uh, he'll be narrating the latest Loose Change, which is absolutely great. Um, it, it's, I, I think, I think we're, we're getting to a point where people are starting to really pay attention, and more and more people are starting to wake up, and it's the snowball effect, and it's, it's growing exponentially now. And it's probably also getting these guys in, in government, whoever had something to do with this or that is behind this, and the liars proven liars within our government, they're probably getting a little bit antsy and scared, and they might even, you know, accelerate whatever plans that they have. That's that's what I fear. Okay. So. Uh, now, what are, like, other pilots in your group are saying? Uh, is there something cooking in the background that we might see a lot of more and more mavericks coming out who are on, let's say, still on duty? That they would be coming out. Are you guys? I mean, do you have anything uh, to say about yeah, that? Yeah. Well, you know, the problem with this is putting their names up on the website. I, there's, there's probably you know hundreds of pilots out there that I've spoken with, 
that agree with our work, but they just don't want to put their name up. I, I know of several uh, uh, active-duty military pilots that are, that are relatively high-ranking, and, and I hate to say this without backing it up with source, but, you know, they, they don't want to put their names up just yet until they separate um, from active duty, and once they do, they're going to be, uh, they're going to be done home. So. Okay. Um, are you getting any uh, oppositions, any threats, any, uh, you're not being a patriot, you're helping the enemies? Uh, I see little things here and there that I could probably, I could probably, you know, blame on, on the fact that I'm, that I'm speaking out and building this organization, but nothing that can be concrete proof of that I'm being harassed. Um, I, we get some guys out there that say I'm a phony and Rob Balsamo is dead, I'm just jokers like that, but... Nothing really concrete proof of, of harassment um, uh, where I can definitively say it's due to the fact of, you know, uh, us building this organization. So. Okay. What about the government? Have you had any uh, harassments from the government for what, for the not, type of work you're doing? Not that I, that I can pin pinpoint on anything, no. Okay. Okay. Uh, like I said, we don't blame we don't we don't point blame at this point. We don't offer theory at this point. We're just being Americans. We're, we're being Americans, to, trying to um, get answers from our government, <clears throat> the government that's supposed to serve we the people, and they're not giving us answers. Okay. And now, what about what, what about the? Uh, I mean, we did have a um, supposedly. I guess an independent commission that looked into this, and they came up with a report. We spent about what, fifteen, twenty million dollars on that report. <laughs> Are you talking about the nine eleven omissions and distortions? Well, yeah. I mean, there was like ten yeah. uh, well, senators. I mean, it, even the clip in our film, and I was thankful to come across this clip. To Lee, <laughs> Lee Hamilton, the co-chair of the nine eleven commission report. Uh, I have a great clip in our film saying. Uh, he's right there saying, we were set up to fail. A lot of people have things to hide, over a hundred people. Right there. And of course it was on some small broadcasting company up in uh, Canada. It wasn't broadcast all over Fox, CNN, or MSNBC, because if it was, more and more people would have been more and more outraged a lot sooner. So, uh, I mean, right there, just by this man saying that, and the fact that we have granted this government the powers to go to war based on 9-11 and the independent commission that was tasked to investigate this, the co-chair himself is saying we were set up to fail, Americans should be outraged. We should, be, we should have millions marching up the steps of the Capitol right now saying we need a real investigation and, and we should not leave those steps of the Capitol until we get one. Uh, how come we don't see, I mean, I'm sure the media, the mainstream media, I'm sure they have a lot of questions. And how come we're not seeing the media asking for an independent investigation? And if there is an inv independent investigation, do you think, uh, can the United States, and do you think that the United States can investigate itself? Uh, it can if we're open and honest about everything, sure. And, and they let people... Uh, average Americans in to, to watch it. Now, I, I, again, I, before, before May of this last year, I was never political. I was never, uh, I never, uh, I had blind trust in our government. They, they said, go do this, and I did it, basically, you know, um, and I supported them for it. Although I was pissed off about, you know, going into Iraq and whatnot, and uh, I was a typical lefty at that point, um, which didn't really pay attention too much, and now I am. So, you know, I don't really know what the answer is. I'm, I'm sure there are a lot of lawyers out there that can come up with much better answers than I can. But what I do know is something needs to be done because it's getting out of control. Um, our, our government, I mean, people are getting arrested left and right. They're being, on, they're being put through, you know, uh, uh, trials due to corruption. It's proven that elements within this government are liars, period. Right there, and the fact that this commission was set up to fail, you know, the Americans have to start doing something about this. They serve us. The con while it, it, we have to start doing something about this while our Constitution is still uh, holding together thread by thread from what they've already done to it. Very good. Rob, I uh, just wanted to say thank you uh, for coming on the program, and uh, I will talk to you on Saturday on the radio show.
Oh yeah, that's right. What time is that on? Uh, four uh, four p.m. Central. Okay, sounds good. And you'll call yes. me with that. Yes. Um, thank you uh, for coming on the program tonight. Okay. Thank you, Sean. Thanks. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, um, like we say here, you know, we we want to be the voice of the truth, the voice of the truth movement, because we must understand 9/11 so we can understand what came after 9/11. And the only way we're going to understand what is going on in Iraq is if we understand why we went to Iraq. And the only way we understand that is if we understand what happened on 9/11 and why 9/11 took place. So um Unless you start asking questions, it's going to be extremely hard to find the answers if you don't know what questions to ask. And if you are afraid to ask questions, then we will never know what the truth is. And there is nothing wrong with asking questions. Now what I like about Rob and his group, they're not offering an answer. They're not offering, they're not speculating. They're not saying it was not Flight 77 that hit the Pentagon. They're saying it is, uh, we're having questions, we're having problems in understanding this. So why would the government be so secretive about it? Why don't they just show us and tell us? You know, you're going to tell me that, well, they did show us that little video and uh, that they showed with the uh, with the plane heading it, we did not see any plane. As a matter of fact, that's why Rob got into Robert got into this mix because of that video. Because he said, "Well, wait a minute, where's the 757? Something is definitely wrong." And you know that is the most fortified building in the country with lots of cameras why would the FBI go across the street to a gas station and confiscate their tapes why aren't they showing us these tapes these are some questions, lots of questions that needs answers, and we're not uh, getting any answers. It's not that we don't like this government. If they're lying to us, then we have a problem. I don't know. There's a lot of questions and no answers. And it looks like our guys in the booth are uh, not paying attention. Um, but okay. So what about 9/11, and why 9/11 took place? That's what we must understand, and that's what we must. Well, we've got to have the answers because we went to Iraq because of 9-11 we went to Iraq and destroyed a whole country because of what happened on 9-11 now if 9-11 now we know that Iraq did not have anything to do with 9-11 then what then what we have made the Iraqis lives miserable ladies and gentlemen I have seen a lot that you did not get a chance to see I have seen the children wounded dying men women wounded and dying I have seen that I have seen when they tried to perform an operation on someone that was shot in the neck and the head with no electricity with no anesthesia You did not see any of that. We, as Americans, are responsible for that. We, as Americans, are paying for that. 
Can we go to camera two? Thank you. I know you guys are sleeping in the back, but uh, pay attention, please. So what happened? The only thing that we can do right now is to ask questions. Because when you ask questions, you force the government to have an independent inquiry. But when you're not asking questions and when you're just letting things and accepting things the way they are, that's when you have a problem. Because remember, in democracy, the people are responsible. So what is your responsibility in the death of 655,000 Iraqis? Probably the right number is even more than that. What is your responsibility in the biggest exodus in that region since 1948 when the Palestinians were forced to leave their country? Now the Iraqis, over two million Iraqis have left Iraq seeking refuge in neighboring countries. What is your responsibility in it? Because remember, 90% of you were with George Bush when he went and attacked Iraq. Now, 90% of you are against George Bush, at least against his policy. But what are you doing? I mean, these polls that we hear about, but we don't see anything on the ground. The news media is just now starting to scratch the surface on what we talked about here on this show four years ago. When people were calling us traitors and we hate America, now everything we have talked about, everything we told you, now the mainstream media is scratching the surface on that. We told you there was no weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. We told you Saddam did not have any links to 9-11. Now, the mainstream media is saying that. You're not even putting the mainstream media, you're not putting any pressure on them to stop lying to you. Right here in this town where we at, from since uh, uh, 9 o'clock in the morning until late at night, nothing but lies and nothing but garbage. Do your job. Call the radio station and say, put an alternative view. The view you're putting with Sean Hannity and Rush Limbaugh and Larry Elders and Bill O'Reilly and Loon the Moon or Moon the Loon, that's garbage. Enough lies. Enough lies. Because you as a person in this democracy is responsible for that. Every one of you, as individuals, you are responsible. Because we're not in a fascist state, even though people think that we are already in a fascist state. But you still can pick up your phone and call your representatives and call the radio station and say, enough of this garbage. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we will be back in uh, four minutes. And uh, with Ed Kanan, they just visited Iran. And we will uh, see exactly what they have done in Iran and why did they go there to start with. And are we going to have a war with Iran? See you in four minutes.